So you really want to sell your aircraft and cash out and get paid some moolah, dough, big ones, buckaroos, whatever the kids on the streets are calling it these days. Well, here are some of the biggest mistakes that an individual selling an aircraft or a person buying an aircraft make in this process that could cost either party financially. What are they? Well, it's Caleb here from Air 101 and we're going to talk about it. What are some of these major mistakes? We're going to talk about this in a split second, but if you stay to the end of this video, you're going to find out why it's so important to know this. Hey, wait. What does this split second really mean? Immediate, instant, instantaneous, straight away. Okay then, I guess you've already made it to the most important part of the video. Well, awesome, and it's not even the end yet, so thanks for sticking around. Number one, not knowing when coverage stops for the seller. Many people think that your aircraft insurance coverage stops once you call your aviation insurance broker and tell them. Well, sorry to say, that is incorrect. Cover stops the moment that the seller and buyer sign the bill of sale and there is a transfer of funds. At this very point, there is no longer aircraft insurance coverage on the seller's aircraft insurance policy. Aircraft owners need to understand that the insurance company is... <laughs> insurance company not? Insurance company is not tied to a bit of bill of sale. Blah, 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 blah. Aircraft owners need to understand that the insurance coverage is tied to the date that the bill of sale is signed. Number two, buyers not knowing when to put insurance coverage on their aircraft. The aircraft buyer needs to make sure that they've already filled out an application, got a quote, and went ahead with the insurance coverage and got a certificate of insurance for the date that they're going to sign the bill of sale. So what this really means is if you're going to buy the aircraft on a Friday, sign the bill of sale on Friday, then maybe call your aviation insurance broker on a Monday and tell them to put the coverage in place for that Friday subject to the bill of sale going through. This way you already will have the certificate of insurance printed it off and have it ready to be put in your aircraft when you finally purchase the aircraft. If both parties watch this video, pay attention to this process, then there'll be no miscommunication between the seller of the aircraft and the buyer of the aircraft. Now that we clarify these two common mistakes, it's important to know why I wanted to bring this topic up. So why is it so crucial to know this? Well, here is the scenario. They're in a carriage being pulled by a horse. Then a wheel falls off and the carriage tips over. Will there be insurance coverage on your horse carriage? Sorry, I forgot today's an aircraft insurance video, not a horse carriage insurance video. Here is the correct scenario that all pilots need to think about. An individual who lives in Ontario sells an aircraft to someone who lives in British Columbia. The seller and buyer sign the bill of sale and transfer the funds when the aircraft is in Ontario. Then the seller says, Hello, buyer of my aircraft. I have this fantastic idea. Listen to this. How about we do the bill of sale, do the transfer of funds all in Ontario, and then I'm going to leave my aircraft insurance on there so that you can fly the aircraft from Ontario over to British Columbia. And then at that point, I'm going to give my aviation insurance broker a call and tell them that they can cancel the insurance on my aircraft. Now, if there was an accident while the individual was flying the aircraft from Ontario over to British Columbia, would there be insurance on the seller's aircraft insurance policy? The answer is no. Why? Because the bill of sale and transfer of funds happen in Ontario. So at that moment that they completed the documents and did the transfer of funds, the aircraft insurance coverage would stop on the seller's aircraft insurance policy. The reason why I wanted to bring this up is I get phone calls lots of times from individuals who say that the aircraft that they are selling just landed at the destination where it was supposed to go and the buyer is now putting their coverage in place. But then I ask them, where did they sign the bill of sale and do the transfer of funds? Was it before the aircraft took off or was it after the aircraft landed? And they usually say it was before the aircraft took off. So then I say to them, I just want to say I'm really happy that the flight went well and that everybody is safe. But if there was an accident while the aircraft was doing that flight, there would most likely have been no coverage in place under the seller's aircraft insurance policy. And realistically, there are many aircraft that are flying around Canada technically illegally with no coverage on them because the buyer and seller of the aircraft didn't know their roles in the process and know when coverage stopped on the aircraft seller's insurance policy and when the coverage started on the aircraft buyer's insurance policy. Now, if you're thinking about buying an aircraft, well, you should watch this video right here that talks about the three major mistakes that an aircraft buyer makes when purchasing an aircraft. Stay safe, have fun in your horse carriage, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. See you in the next one. Bye.